Lately, we are constantly hearing about the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. What is it for? How is it organized? And above all, why does it so annoy China and Russia? Well, come on, make yourself comfortable. We're going to see it right now and why it plays a significant role in global politics. Welcome to our deep dive into the heart of the Atlantic Alliance. OTAN, or the North Atlantic Treaty Organization as it is known in English, it's a symbol of unity, a bastion against threats, and a testament to the power of cooperation among nations. Well, the other OTAN is a political and military alliance between the United States and Canada, and a large part of the European countries. Currently, OTAN is formed by 30 countries. It's a titan born out of the ashes of World War II. The most important of the North Atlantic Treaty, in its Article 5, which says that an armed attack against one of the members of the alliance that takes place in Europe or North America will be considered as an attack against all the countries of the organization. That is, that all the countries that form the other have the duty to defend each other. The treaty specifically speaks of an attack in North America or Europe or the islands of member countries that are north of the Tropic of Cancer, i.e., territories such as Shuda and Malia or the Falkland Islands are not under the umbrella of protection of the other. So far, only once has Article 5 been invoked. And who was it? Yes, the United States in 2001. After the attacks, of the 11S, OTAN answered this call by collaborating in the war against the Taliban in Afghanistan. However, all members have an ace up their sleeve, that is the Article 4, according to which any country can call on the rest to consult and expose to the alliance to a particular problem. This so-called consultation has only been held four times in history. Three of these four were carried out by Turkey, the first for the Iraq War, and the other two for attacks received during the Syrian Civil War. The fourth has been invoked by Poland during the 2014 Crimean crisis due to the mobilization of Russian troops on the Polish border. Well, here's the part about what is OTAN, but you're probably more interested to know why there is now so much fuss with OTAN and who and why are their enemies. Let's decode the mystery together. In the aftermath of World War II, a new alliance emerged. This was an era marked by destruction and despair, a time when the world was in desperate need of stability and peace. Amidst this chaos, the seeds of the Organization of the Atlantic Treaty, or OTAN as we know it, were planted. In the late 40s, the world was divided, caught in a power struggle between two ideological behemoths, the democratic West and the communist East. The Western nations, led by the United States, recognized the need for collective defense against potential aggression from the East, specifically the Soviet Union. And so, they began to lay the groundwork for an alliance that would stand the test of time. On the 4th of April, 1949, in Washington, D.C., 12 nations came together to sign a historic document. The North Atlantic Treaty, the birth certificate of OTAN, was more than just a piece of paper. It was a promise, a commitment to stand together in defense of peace and security. The founding members, ranging from North America to Western Europe, pledged to safeguard freedom and democracy against the threat of totalitarianism. But OTAN was not just about military might or strategic alliances. At its heart, it was a symbol of unity, a testament to the power of cooperation. It was a beacon of hope in a world darkened by the shadow of conflict and division. The initial purpose of OTAN was clear, to deter Soviet aggression, prevent the revival of nationalist militarism, and encourage political dialogue. Thus, OTAN was born, a beacon of unity in a world divided. Its birth marked a turning point in global politics, setting the stage for a new era of international cooperation. It was the dawn of a new age, an age of alliances, where the strength of the many would shield against the might of the few. Fast forward to today, OTAN is not just about defense anymore. This alliance has evolved into a complex structure, a global network that goes far beyond the conventional understanding of a military alliance. It's like a high-tech fortress with layers upon layers of intricate mechanisms, all working together to maintain peace and security. At the heart of this fortress is the North Atlantic Council, the decision-making body of OTAN, where each member country has an equal voice. The council is supported by various committees and working groups, each with its specific mandate, 
ensuring that all aspects of security are covered. Then there's the military arm of OTAN, a formidable force that extends across land, sea, and air. This includes the integrated military structure, where military resources from member countries are pooled together for collective defense. But OTAN's reach extends beyond the battlefield. It's involved in political consultations, crisis management, and cooperative security initiatives. It's a platform for diplomacy, fostering dialogue and cooperation even with non-member countries. It's a hub for innovation, constantly adapting to new security challenges such as cyber threats and terrorism. So, how does a country become a part of this global power structure? Well, it's not a straightforward process. A country needs to demonstrate its commitment to democratic values, human rights, and the rule of law. It must be ready to contribute to the collective defense and security. It must undergo a period of intense dialogue and scrutiny before being invited to join. It's a rigorous process, but one that ensures the integrity and unity of the alliance. As we can see, OTAN is more than a shield. It's a symbol of unity, a platform for cooperation, and a beacon of hope in an uncertain world. It's not just about defending territories. It's about protecting values, promoting stability, and preserving peace. Being a part of OTAN is being a part of a global power structure. It's about being a part of a community that stands together, ready to face whatever challenges the future may bring. As the world changed, so did the challenges OTAN faced. In its infancy, OTAN was a beacon of unity, a shield against the traditional warfare threats posed during the Cold War era. But as we moved from the 20th to the 21st century, warfare itself transformed, and so did OTAN's role in it. Imagine the world as a game of chess. In the past, the game was played on a physical board with tangible pieces. But today, the game is often digital, played on screens where the pieces are invisible and the attacks are silent until they strike. This is the new battlefield, and this, the new warfare, is cyber warfare. OTAN, much like an experienced chess player, adapted to the changing rules of the game. From being primarily a defensive alliance against physical invasions, OTAN evolved to protect against invisible threats. It became a collective shield against cyber attacks that could potentially cripple a nation's infrastructure, economy, and even its democracy. But how does an organization built on the principles of traditional warfare adapt to such a change? The answer lies in its inherent strength, unity. OTAN's unity allowed it to pool resources, share intelligence, and collectively respond to cyber threats. This unity, coupled with the technological prowess of its member nations, enabled OTAN to transform into a digital fortress. As we look at OTAN today, we see an alliance that has not only stood the test of time but has also evolved with it. From defending against tanks and aircraft to shielding against cyber threats, OTAN's purpose of collective defense remains steadfast. It continues to adapt, innovate, and above all, protect. But while OTAN's battlefield has changed, its purpose has not. It was born out of a need for collective defense, a need for unity in the face of adversity. And this remains its purpose today. Whether it's tanks on the ground or bites in the cyberspace, the threats have evolved, but the mission remains the same. OTAN's battlefield may have changed, but its purpose remains. It is still the shield that stands guard, protecting its members and upholding the values of peace, security, and unity that it was founded on. What does the future hold for OTAN? As we cast our gaze forward, we enter a realm of possibilities and uncertainties. OTAN, the shield of the Atlantic, standing tall and unyielding, faces a horizon teeming with challenges and opportunities. The geopolitical landscape is constantly shifting, and with it, the nature of the threats we face. From the remnants of the Cold War, we've entered an era of cyber warfare, space races, and artificial intelligence, all of which demand a new breed of defense strategy. For OTAN, this means a continuous evolution, a relentless pursuit of innovation and adaptation. Imagine a future where the Alliance's shield extends even further, encompassing new territories, new members, countries from every corner of the globe, each bringing their unique strengths and perspectives to the table, enriching the collective defense. The expansion of OTAN is not just about numbers, but about enhancing the diversity and capabilities of the Alliance. But this future is not without its challenges. Each new member, each new technology, presents its own set of complexities. 
Cybersecurity threats, for instance, are no longer confined to the digital realm. They have the potential to disrupt our physical world, our infrastructure, our daily lives. OTAN must rise to the challenge, developing cutting-edge defenses to safeguard our interconnected world. And let's not forget the technological advancements on the horizon. From AI-powered defense systems to quantum computing, the future of OTAN could very well be a scene from a science fiction novel. These technologies hold immense potential, but they also come with their own ethical and practical challenges. OTAN must navigate these complexities, ensuring that technology serves the cause of peace and security, not undermine it. In an ever-changing world, OTAN must adapt to continue its mission. The future may present new challenges, new frontiers, but one thing remains certain. The Alliance's commitment to collective defense, to peace, to security. The shield of the Atlantic will continue to stand, ever vigilant, ever ready. And as we stride into the future, we do so with the knowledge that OTAN, our shield, will adapt, evolve, and grow stronger, ever upholding its mission in our rapidly changing world. So why does OTAN matter in our lives, you may ask? Well, let's think about it. Imagine a world without this shield, this fortress of unity. OTAN's significance stretches far beyond the boundaries of its member countries. It's a beacon of security and peace, a bulwark against the tides of conflict and instability. Picture this. A father in a small European town, able to sleep peacefully each night, knowing that his children are safe. A young woman in North America, pursuing her dreams without the shadow of war looming over her. These are the people, the countless lives touched by OTAN's mission. But it's not just about the here and now. It's about the future, about ensuring a safe and peaceful world for generations to come. It's about adapting to new threats, about standing tall in the face of adversity. OTAN's story is far from over, and we all have a role to play in its next chapter.